Right, folks, how's things? We're back here for another for another week. Uh, just going to uh, go on about the uh, traditional finals here. Obviously, Kerry, Kerry and Claire go always slide, but they're obviously one side of affairs. But um, it's still, still good to see, um, obviously, Kerry and Galway motoring through the gears. Um, then we obviously have the, the provincial finals this year, uh, this week as well with Dublin, Dublin Loud and the big one in Clonus for, for the Ulster man here himself, our man, yeah. Derry. Uh, and obviously, we go to the uh, the Talented Cup fixtures. Uh, we'll have Stevie's predictions and we'll have a wee chat about GA go as well and see what, where, that's, where that's going. But, Stevie, how was the form? How was things with you? Not too bad, isn't it? Not too bad. Just off the golf course. Uh, oh, so lovely. Lovely evening. Lovely evening for it. So, trying to refine the short game, you know. What's, what's your handicap? Do you have a handicap? That's where the money's made. Yeah, I was playing off five last year, but I'm out to seven now. So, I'm not playing enough. Not playing enough, you know. So That's very good. Uh, huh? that's, why, that's why I'm practicing. That's why I'm practicing because you, you can't afford to make two mistakes when you're down in those digits, you know. What's your uh, nearest, co- nearest golf course? Green Ore. Uh, just down in Carlingford. It's nice, nice sort of park landing links, doing a lot of work to it. Nice course, you know. But it's nice, nice, you know, from a football perspective, it's nice to get out. It's, it's the one place that you put the phone away for a few hours, big man, you know, and, and switch off and hit a few balls in, 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 in anger, you know. <laughs> uh, Carlingford is a wild spot. Is, are you far away from there? Wild spot. I've had a few close uh, shaves now down at Carney for down the years, like a few. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've heard, I've heard stories. I've heard stories. A few, about that stagnates, spot. a few stagnates in the likes of that, like you know. And ah, uh, uh, no, listen, it's a great spot. It's a great spot, actually. Um, you know, listen, historically, going back years and years, like when I went down there years ago with with the parents and stuff, and we were wild young and that. It's a lovely part of the world, like, but it's got very sort of. Sort of wee hidden gem, maybe 20, 30 years ago, but it's become very sort of tourist, touristy orientated, very commercialised now, and a lot of hens and stags and stuff go there to weekends and stuff. So I think that I think the locals are are are, are dreading this sort of time of the year, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Look, we 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 we'll get into it. Uh, obviously, yeah. provincials. The uh, well, we kind of predicted as in Kerry, we Sarah Kerry Claire. Obviously, look, it's on a serious note, it was it was great to see the Clippers play. Uh, it was uh, looking obviously a very tough situation. I actually don't know how the hell they did it. Um, obviously, yeah. uh, their yeah. family, they, out of respects for their their mother, they, they felt they, they they had to play or not had to play, but they wanted to play. So, uh, and the two of them put on a, an exhibition as usual. Um, just even the goal they got, like party uh, to David, the goal they got, like literally. The, look, the ice. Yeah, get the look, the ice. man. Get the look. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. That they know exactly yeah. what they want to do when Paulie's yeah. on the ball. He knows what David's thinking, and David knows what Paulie's that, thinking. So that's years, years though end of of you know down in the playing fields in Fossa, and you know, and and obviously honing the skills and, and and kicking ball into each other, you know, and obviously developing an understanding, you know, and and obviously you know, Lord rest their their, their mother. I'm sure she was a wonderful Gail and and a big carry woman. I'm sure she would have wanted the. The lads to play and it shows you the character of the two boys too and I, I thought the situation was handled very well as well yeah. uh, Barry got him offside very quickly as well because you know sometimes post game like and you know it, it does it is a bit of a it's a bit of a circus surrounding David at times you know and, and it's, un, it's unfair on him particularly after a game you know and he'll spend a lot of time with the youngsters and stuff like that but I think Sunday being the unique occasion it was, it was, it was the right thing to do to, to get him out of the way, even quickly, you know. Uh, fair play to, to Big Mike Quirk, I think it was, who, who who ushered him off the pitch. You know, for, really, 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 you know. For, sorry to call you, but for, for a 23-year-old, Stevie, he's, like, he's not on social media. He's, He's a young young man with with old uh, yes. with an old he's head. Lad, like yeah, he's a very mature lad. He seems a very humble guy as well, and you know, and and obviously it's a difficult time for him and the family now, and and we wish them we wish them all our best, and and, and obviously you know over the next few weeks, and I'm sure football I'm sure football will will obviously be a fantastic release for the boys in the in the summer months ahead, and and no doubt their mother will be very close to them as the season progresses. Yeah, yeah. What uh, Henry with the with the game itself, Stevie? Did you learn anything new from? From Kerry or uh, as, as no, expected. No, listen, and they're 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 a wonderful team to watch when they're in full flow. They're kick passing, like you know, for I think it was the first goal, like the little dink pass from Shawnee O'Shea. Like yeah. you know, ninety nine percent of footballers in the country would have hand passed that or else clipped it over the bar. 
but he's thinking of the big the big score and you know their their instinctive nature their ability to kick the ball but not just kick the ball and uh, there's probably this misperception of kicking the ball from the middle third into the inside line it's when they're in the inside line their ability to switch the play yeah. with a cross field pass or a little dink pass or you know a little foot pass just with a, with with their with their lesser side if, if, it, if they even have a lesser side a lot of the players but that's one thing about Kerry footballers and you know yourself like obviously having come up against them in the past many a time you know their ability just to be able to kick the ball into with freedom and flair it's 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 a joy to watch and Paddy Talley was maybe the missing ingredient for this group you know from a from an organizational perspective you know Talley is bringing things into Kerry obviously over the last number of years that maybe just wasn't in their game you know that real sort of rigid stubborn defensiveness that, that was maybe missing that was maybe missing you know because the flair stuff and, and the nature of the way they play you can't really coach that end like you can coach it to an extent you can coach it to an extent but they're the, the, the best instinctive offensive team in the country. A lot of teams now are playing structured attacks and, you know, slow plays and, and you know, and, and obviously, you know, coaching the players into how to break down a, a defence system. But Kerry still rely on that, just that beautiful freedom and flair and, and instinctive nature. And, and you cannot, you know, you can't beat that. You can't beat that, you know, when you have that. And if it's, if it's six forwards, you can kick off both feet, most of them. Uh, they're they're tailor made for Crow Park. The way they move the ball, how quickly they move the ball, their first touch, their ability to slick the ball through the through the feet and the and the hands. And listen, Enda, you know, I had my doubts about them during the league, but obviously going away for ten days, warm weather training camp, the work they've done, they've lo- they just look razor razor sharp now. Uh, the All Ireland series will be interesting. <laughs> Themselves a Mayo. The first game, I, I think it'll be a little bit of shadow boxing in the first game. I don't think they'll we'll, we'll read too much into that. But my concern, Enda, is the way the two provincial finals finished. I think Sunday's final in Crow Park will be exactly the same. I think Dublin will beat Louth. We'll come to that later in the show. I think Sunday's final in Clonus will be a lot closer. Yeah. Uh, but historically, Ulster has always been that sort of province where, you know, attritionally teams will be very, very evenly matched. But my fear for the Sam Maguire, and, and even more so, for the Talson Cup this year is the absolute drubbins that are going to be handed out. Like it's there's no question about it that last year's Talson Cup with a knockout competition was much better idea. This nonsense of giving teams extra games. What like for example, I take my own county on Saturday to play Waterford. There will be 15 points plus in that game. Without a shadow of a doubt, Carlo played Waterford last weekend a challenge game, beat them by 12 points. There Waterford finished bottom of division four. With all due respect. Not take, being disrespectful to Waterford in any way whatsoever, but travelling to Nuri on Saturday, taking an absolute hiding. I don't know what that, what they're going to get out of that. Go yeah. Playing these in Waterford and taking another drub in the following week, I don't know what they're going to get out of that. And by the time they get the game three again temporary, players will be thinking, just get me out of here. Just get yeah. me out of here, you know. And that's my fear for the for the Talchon Cup. I think, you know, the group stages, we're, we're playing three games, you know, so whatever whatever amount of games we're playing, for three teams to qualify at a group of four, it just does not make sense. Like I've said this, I'm harping on, and listen, look, I'm not going to change change it, but you know, I think people will realise, as in some of the cases I've said, that I don't think people know or understand what is coming down the road. You know, it's going to be a complete shit show, and that's the bottom line. It really, really is. And I'll tell you, I said to a gentleman at the weekend, if you're really, really interested and you think there'll be, you know, a couple of interesting games, you'd be safer switching on the Talchon Cup and the Sam Maguire at the semi-final stage and watching from there. Because see before that, waste of time, waste of time. <laughs> I know. And look, you know me now at this stage. I don't, I don't disagree with that point. Uh, as we've said before, and take the GA, it's always the case. It'll take them a year to to see. Oh, this obviously doesn't work, and then rejig it again, and fuck it, we 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 we'll start from ground zero again. So, uh, just one one thing. Get back to Kerry, TV In terms of the one question mark I'd have with them is their midfield and the reinforcements coming in from midfield. What's your opinion on that? In terms, yeah, of listen, da- David yeah. Ward is gone. Uh, question marks there. Obviously, Jim O'Connor's a Really good player, Jack Barry, solid. Yeah. But apart from them two, they're they're light there now. I think. Yeah. Well, look, look, and I suppose you know nowadays we we don't have a kick out strategy where a keeper just sets the ball down and dumps it out to the big man to feel it. But it is a fantastic out ball to have. I was at the All Ireland Club semi final between White Cullen and Glenn, um, and uh, Crooks were on before it against Hubert Crooks playing in the semi final. Um, kind of think, uh, White Cullen, Connacht, Glenn, Ulster, and sure. Crooks. Uh, b- 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 Kill was it Kilmacud? Uh, Who the hell? Kilmacud. Kilmacud. Crooks were playing Kilmacud. Crooks were playing Kilmacud, and in yes. the semi-final of the club All Ireland, and 
Kilmacud raced in a five six point lead, and it was towards the end of the game uh, that that uh, uh, not uh, Jesus not Crooks, Kieran O'Reilly, sorry, Kieran O'Reilly. Yes, yeah, 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 Moore's Club. Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. My, I was thinking, my, my head got too much time in the sun this evening. But Kieran O'Reilly's were playing against Kilmacud in in the first game, and Moran was a colossus. See those last yeah. 10, 12 he was a colossus you know they put a squeeze on they were chasing the game you know and if Kerry were to put a squeeze on a team and there's no out ball and Moran's feeling it, it like it puts a serious serious duress on a team you know but if you don't have that physicality or size or strength mm. it's very difficult to get out at times uh, Andy you know and, and particularly if a team do put a major press on you but also the all way if you were to press the opposition you know, it gives you a fantastic foothold in the game if you've got that physicality across your middle third, you know. So it, it will be interesting to see as, as the season unfolds. I, I'll be honest with you, Enda. I don't think, you know, there's there's an unbelievably amount of standout midfielders in the country as we speak. Brian Fenton, probably over the last six, seven years, has been one of the most consistent midfielders in the country. But even Brian himself has probably just dropped off the boil a little bit. And look, that's natural. You cannot sustain those levels of performance, you know, on a consistent basis over such a long period of time. I still believe Derry have the best midfield in the country. I still believe Brendan Rodgers and Connor Glass are, are two supreme footballers. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they both have a bit of everything. Rodgers can do a tag and roll. He can drive ball with the ball. He can kick scores. Glass has got a bit of everything. You know, they've also got the size, the physicality and the strength. And, and I think that, obviously, when we come to speak about the Ulster final, I think that's where they'll, they'll hold a big advantage this weekend over Armagh, their midfield, you know. But certainly Kerry moving forward. And listen, they may feel, Enda, that... You know, the dynamics of Gaelic is obviously changing quite a bit. You maybe don't need that six foot seven monster in the middle of the field now. The game has become so much more dynamic and athletic and, and the running power is, is obviously, you know, just as important. Like and it's it's something obviously that you've spoke about with Mayo as well. You know, with Damon O'Connor in the middle of the field for Mayo gives them that real, you know, drive and energy, you know. So I think that is a big part of, of the modern day midfield as well. You do need the legs and as much as the size and physicality. Yeah, no, I think gradually yeah, yeah. I think you're right in terms of, uh, the, like we say, you took Jim O'Connor there. Like he's not known for his feet and ability. They all like he's he's just a greyhound. Like he'll run all day. Like athletically, he's an absolute freak. Like so, th- that's an interesting point. It's a valid point you're on about. Obviously, it's more high feet and is nearly gone out of the game. It's it's the 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 goalie going to the pockets and running onto the ball chest high anymore, isn't it? Like so, I know. Look, um, one thing we carry there, Adrian's plan was would probably be the third option maybe for the midfield spot. But um, yeah, it's just just one question mark I'd have. Over them. They're bit, look, they're still quite strong coming off the bench in terms of the, the forwards they have for Stephen O'Brien, Kenny Splan uh, coming off the bench there, Brendan O'Berglick uh, for the defence as well. So, yeah, look, uh, that didn't tell us much there from that game. So, uh, it, mm. look, it'd be interesting when we get to the group stages. But moving on to, we say, go in Sligo. Uh, Again, like it's been like, look, Kerry looked slick. Go, he looked, look, that game was over at half time, let's be honest. Um, yeah, I, I have to say though, I, I felt there was a there was to be fair to Sligo. Yeah, I, I feared I feared for them in, in at half time because they were playing with a gale force wind, and Galway were picking them off with with such ease. But I think end of there was a wee spell. They got a great start, and then there was a, there was just a spell where it's just those little individual errors. And at that level, if Sligo make that mistake against Leitrim or Sligo make that mistake against. Um, yeah. An Oakley or or a, or you know a, a Wicklow, they're not punished as, as as hard as they're punished. You know when they make that mistake against a an outfit like Galway or Kerry, those top teams punish you. And it's one of the biggest things probably that separates Division One from Division Four is the turnover count. Like yeah. it's one of the big it's one of the big aspects of the game. You know particularly particularly in the lower leagues, and it's 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 something that I've noticed. You know obviously having coached uh, in most of the divisions. You see a, a huge emphasis on turnovers at the highest level. You know, limiting your turnovers, whereas the lower leagues, the turnover counts are extremely high, and therefore yeah. the game becomes very, very basketball esque. So it becomes very yo yo. There's a lot of yo yos in the game. There's a lot of turnovers. Teams are driving forward, driving back, and then energy levels drop, fitness levels drop. You know, and that's ultimately what happens. You know, and and Sligo probably had to work twice as hard as Galway in yeah. that game. Just from their personal errors, you know, and and but to be fair to them and to be fair to, to Tony and the guys there, they've had a fantastic season. They've been promoted. They've got to a Connacht final. No matter what happens from here on in, it's been a huge success. And and for a team like themselves who have been promoted, obviously maybe the Talshin w- was a more realistic aim, or sorry, a more realistic uh, opportunity for them to win silver, more silverware on top of Division Four. 
they, they don't have any chance of winning the, the Sam Maguire. We know that, and they know that probably. But three bigger games now for them, and possibly maybe even a scalp or a win, you know, yeah. would give them a fair degree of confidence. But they certainly could take heart with with how spurted they were in the second half. They, they kicked three or four points in a row towards the end of the game to get it back to eight or nine. But it was the two goals in quick succession in the, in the first half just ended the game as a contest, you know, and... Again, it, 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 it just brings up the, the old question of the provincials again. You know, are they worthwhile? Is there any value based on them? Now, you know, Armagh will, will eat your hand off for, for an Ulster title yeah. on Sunday. But it's, different. That's, different. Yeah, it's, that's a unique situation. And do you sacrifice that one sort of unique situation for the greater good of, of, of the four provincials, which, which have become sort of redundant now, you know? Yeah, no, again, Lucas... Uh, yeah, uh, I just don't want, like we keep harping on about it. It'll be again. They'll have to, they'll have to look at it again, Stevie. Uh, with the years out, I think. Look at, I'm afraid, as you said there, I'm afraid. Uh, you know the crowd attendances coming to these group stages. Uh, it'll be interesting. People will obviously uh, vote with their feet, like they would. They won't show up, like uh, simple as that. So even look at just the a couple of players I picked out for the Galway Slayo game. I thought John Daney has become a really fine centre back. He's like a cornerback for for Galway now. He's a really good player. Uh, yeah. Matthew Tierney, young player, obviously. Look, he's obviously been up and coming the last couple of years, but he's he's really. You just know, physicality, condition wise, he's becoming a senior player. If you know what I mean. Yeah, no, no. I, I I said this to you a few weeks ago on the show. I felt the moving him from midfield yeah. uh, to wing forward were not maybe as exposed to the whole sort of you know ferocious nature and the war zone in the middle of the field. It's freed yeah. him up a wee bit. I think you know. Yeah. I've always rated Matthew Tierney. I think he's a wonderful footballer. Uh, I was concerned at the start of the year and when I seen the play personnel that Galway were missing, obviously yeah. with. Walsh away with with Kilbacud. He looks like a, a player who is playing. I know that the, the rumor mill was that he was carrying a sort of a flu into the game or whatever, but he does look like a player who's playing with fatigue, uh, yeah. mental and fatigue. He, he's had a big winter with Kilbacud. He got no off season. Uh, he had no pre season as well because he went on holiday to try and recuperate. So he's just in that game to game cycle now, that weekly cycle of game game game, and it's very very difficult. You know when 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 you're obviously maybe running on empty physically and mentally, and and I don't think Shane will. You know, will, will have reached the heights of, of last year, and I don't think he possibly will this year. So they will be probably relying on the likes of Comer, you know, and, and Finnerty and Terry and these boys, yeah. you know, to really, really step up this year. But I felt with the losing Liam Silk and Kieran Malloy and that to traveling and, and the likes of that, I thought that, you know, it was obviously weakening their defense. But as you say, you know, John Daly has been a has been a revelation for them this year, you know, and, and, and obviously, the, you know, Sean Kelly for me is, is, is probably yeah. one of the best. He's one of the best defenders in the country. You know, he's a real driving force, a real warrior, and, they, and can get fucked as well. They, they've got some dogs, as in they found out some dogs. This oh, year, like Peter can. Cook, Peter Cook, and John John Maher, like, um, to like Maher has been. A, I'm not going to say he's a revelation midfielder, but like coming through this year, but he's really he's solid performances. He he does the the grunt work. He fucking gets through a power work and breaking up play. Like he reminds me a bit like Shane O'Shea back. Back uh, with me oh, a few years ago, like he uh, he does the simple things well. He gets he gets forward for a couple of scores and he, he gets on just with tackling like he tackles like fuck like so it's uh, look and I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm as my old man I'm afraid I'm afraid we're going to do. And I know that Podrick sort of, you know, came out in the media and said about the goalkeeper situation. I've spoken about this in the show. I still think there's a there's an uncertainty over who is number one. Is it Gleason? Is it is it uh, Par? And that could just come back to haunt them in the later in the later stages of the championship. You know, if they're going to go with Leeson, uh, go with him. If they're going to go with Par, go with him. Because chopping and changing your goalkeeper, it creates two things. It creates an uncertainty with the goalkeeper. Yeah. It also creates an uncertainty with your full back line as well. Because the goalkeeper to full back line, there's a bit of a connection there. It creates an uncertainty with your outfield players as well. Because no goalkeeper, no matter what anyone says, is the same when it comes to kickouts. No goalkeeper is the same. Different goalkeepers have different attributes. Some keepers are better short, some keepers are better long. I personally think Jason is better at the short kickouts. I think Barr is better at the long ones. But then there's obviously question marks over Gleason's ability to deal with that high ball. But then look, he's not in his own from a goalkeeping perspective there either. No, and that's, yeah, it's it's unusual, isn't it? Like, uh, do they, you know, obviously against 
Roscommon, you know, alternate goalies, they went to a power against Roscommon, obviously, uh, they, you know, not being disrespectful to Sligo here, but they, they, they felt, you know, obviously they're odds on to beat Sligo. So, and they just give the a run out here and go back to power again. It's That's an unusual situation, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. It is. Like, and I, I just feel, and out of all the positions on the field, like yeah. the goalkeeper, is the one position where consistency is 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 probably important, you know. And yeah. I, I just feel they need a, a goalkeeper needs a run of games. Just, listen, any player needs a run of games. You know, if you were to bring in a half back one week, drop him the next week, bring him back in the following week, they're gonna be match sharp, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Who? So, Gleeson obviously against uh, in for Sligo. Who do you think is he going? Is he going to stick with Gleeson? Do you think? I think personally, he probably will. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah I think he, yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting. Um, look, we get on to the uh, obviously the big one, um, uh, Derry. Uh, thoughts I on say, uh, I thought you were going to say there, Dublin, uh, Dublin and Louth, the big one. <laughs> if, you were, if, you were to, if you were to read all the all the press that uh, all the Louth media, you would think that you know it was it was just oh my god, I've never read the like of it in my life. Uh, How do you mean? Go on, I didn't, go look, on. Look, look, I. There's no doubt that Mickey's done a brilliant job there, right? Yeah. But I don't think it's it's the greatest achievement of like it's nearly been portrayed as one of the greatest achievements of all time. Louth back in the Leinster final, they beat Westmeath and awfully to get there. They're the third, they're the second ranked team in Leinster. They finished. So what we have on Sunday is third place in Division Two versus second place in Division Two. That's let's call a spade a spade. Like, you know, yeah. don't give me the whole thing of Dublin. That's this is not the Dublin six in a row. I'm sorry, it's not. You know, so it's not as if it's some sort of you know glorialistic achievement that Louth have got the Leinster final of, against the odds. They haven't got the Leinster final against the odds. They were very very lucky to beat awfully. You know, yeah. a team a team who finished fourth from bottom in Division Three. You know, uh, Westmeath finished third in Division in Division Three. So <laughs> Louth expected. I I would have been I would have been shocked. If Louth hadn't been in a Leinster final, but look, good yeah. luck to them. Let them enjoy their occasion. Let them enjoy their day. And sure, you know they've done enough crying this year, but not being in the Sunday game, so they're live on Sunday. So let's see what they're made of on Sunday. You know. Oh, that's that's. <laughs> <laughs> but the name, <laughs> Jesus. I want, watch, uh, obviously you're getting it. You're getting it across the border there, Stephen. This, 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 they're giving it to you. They, they're, you're getting sick no. of here. <laughs> We got a bit of stick last week for getting Sam Samuel Rice age wrong. I think somebody, some Egypt was given off about me and you getting Samuel Rice age wrong. But here, you know what the laugh was? I met a staunch loud man on Saturday. He actually delivers fruit here to the to the house in in, in Newry here at the weekends and uh, never misses a loud game. And I said to him, "I said, hey, what what are you right?" And he says to be 27, 28. So that's what he said last week as well. But apparently we're wrong. Apparently he's twenty four. You know, he's twenty four. Yeah, yeah, is yeah. he? 24, 25, yeah, something like that. Jesus, fair play. Uh, yeah. He looks old than that. He, looks, he definitely yeah. looks old than that. Uh, footballer. Brilliant footballer, brilliant footballer. You know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Jesus. Uh, no, 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 no debate there. I'll be surprised. I'll be surprised, and uh, if uh, Dublin don't don't put double digits on them, you know, I'll be surprised if Dublin don't win by nine or ten points. I would say Dublin will be reeling. I think Dublin will be reeling from the Kildare performance. Uh, you know that there will be, but the golfing quality, the golfing quality, and the golfing class. I think the way Lau set up, you know, the, they play uh, uh, obviously an ultra defensive system with Mickey, and you know they'll probably choke up a lot of kickouts as well, possibly. So I, I think they'll do enough probably to stay in the game for about three quarters of the game. But I think the last quarter, if Dublin, if Dublin are on their tune, if Dublin are on their game, Crow Park, you know, fastball. I, I, I just think Dublin will have too much for them. I really do, you know. They the start the start right. critical. If Dublin, if Dublin get in front with the way Lowe's play, and if Lowe's have to come out, it, yeah. it, it it could be a, it could be a long day, you know. Do you think Cluxton is there for Dubs uh, Sunday? I, I think he will. From experience point of from an experience point of view alone, I think he will. I think he will end there. Yeah, I think he will. Uh, will we see? Yeah, look, I yeah, it'd be interesting. I, like you now, see me. I'm, I'm interested in seeing the reaction from the from the Dublin team, the squad. Uh, obviously, from the display the last day. So, if they don't, if it is a tight game, that will tell me a lot about the dubs where where they're at. Um, I think yeah. uh, Louth, obviously midfield, they have an advantage. They have two two boys midfield for Louth. Uh, definitely uh, primary ball winners. They, they definitely give them an advantage. They obviously look at Fintan. Fintan oh, will they, curt curtail. Yeah, them. I, I watched them in RD, and I was very very impressed with the way they set up. 
you know, they played a very deep lying zonal offensive system against Derry. They kept themselves in the game. They probably should have won the game that day, and you know, they probably should have won the game that day. And a big Grimes is is a serious, serious athlete. Like he was playing fourteen that day and he was coming out around the middle. You know, he's serious physicality around the middle of the feet. Here Downey obviously last week was in the team yeah. that we got brilliant. You know, they have some brilliant, brilliant footballers. But I just don't think, like, it's it's not a major surprise that they're in a Leinster final, you know, on the trajectory they're on. They finished no. third in Division 2. They're the second highest ranked team in Leinster. And to be honest with you, when you see the mess that, that, that me they're in, and, you know, obviously Kildare obviously will be looking at their under-20s, you know, that have won that have won the All-Ireland semi-final against Down last weekend. They'll be hoping that they could beat Sligo this weekend and win an under-20 title and, and maybe build from that and bring in the likes of, you know, those those under-20s, which they did the last time, you know, with the likes of Jimmy Hyland and guys like that who came through the ranks with, yes. with Kildare. And, and obviously, Brian Flanagan, you know, will be looking very, very closely at what happens at the end of the year from a, from a management perspective as well, because I'm sure with, with the success he's had with those young lads, you know, Kildare might want to bring in some continuity with and bring those young young lads through and build for the future. You know, but Leinster um, football, Leinster football in general, and Leinster football in general is in a very very bad way, like a very bad way. When you look at the teams and, and where they are ranked in the league, you know, it, it's quite concerning. Like you know, there wasn't a Leinster team in Division One this year, not one Leinster team in Division One. You know, which which is a worrying perspective for any province, and a, a worrying perspective for any province. You know, in Division Two. <coughs> You had you had Dublin, you had Louth, you had you had Meath, you know, you had Kildare, and then Division Three, obviously, you know, Westmeath, Offaly, Wicklow and four, Carlo and Carlo, four. Carlo and four, yeah. Least, yeah, like with, with, just get back to Louth, Steve. I suppose Mickey uh, obviously in the last three or four years he brought them up through the divisions. It's you know, I suppose he's a victim of his own success there in terms of the expectations are obviously kind of have come up in loud from that three to four year gap there, that three to four years, uh, what what he's done with them. So, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you in terms of, um, yeah, it was an expectation this year on Loud to get to an Insta final. Let's be honest here. So I don't know where that's coming from. Maybe Particularly when they weren't on the same side of the draw as Kildare or Dublin. Yeah. You know, when they yeah, were yeah. on the same side as Kildare or Dublin, like, you know, and obviously when Awfully knocked me out, you know, yeah. obviously, it, it opened up for them very, very, very open up for them very, very well. But look, it's it's probably and and this is the thing I've always said as well too. If 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 you've got your team well conditioned and you have them well organized, I've said this numerous times before, you can compete with most teams. You can compete with most teams. You know, and that that is the reality of inter county football now. Everyone plays a very, very similar style. If you're organised and you're well conditioned, and there's unquestionably as well, Mickey is a is a wily old fox. He's got a lot of experience, a lot of know how. Gavin Devlin's an excellent coach as well. You know he has been, he has, he will have them well well organised. Mickey's been in big days as well. He knows how to handle occasions that will help the change rooms as well. There's a whole combination of things there from a management perspective that will obviously that will obviously help now this weekend. But but my fear is that if Dublin had it beaten, I think Louth would be in a much better position end of this weekend. Yeah. If Dublin had hammered Kildare, you know, yeah. if Dublin had hammered Kildare, there would have been sort of like, I, I don't think complacency would ever sort of slip in for the, for the Dubs, but there would have been an element of, oh, how many is it going to be? Now everyone's thinking now they have a chance, but realistically, honestly, I don't I, think they have I'm going to play devil's advocate here, Stephen, not devil's advocate, but we say have Kildare give them a, a bit of a blueprint of how to how to slow Dublin down in terms of just, you know, as in leaving the wings completely exposed, just shutting off that D in terms of, if my man is out of the ring, you know how Dublin trying to spread you out? Well, I'm going to stick, stick as far into the D here as possible because that's where, obviously, Dublin want to, that's their score rate, their score zone there, that's where they practice the training. That's... The Dubs were obviously, the Dubs were obviously the, 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 they were obviously the, what you would probably call the, the, the trendsetters when it came yeah. to breaking like a defence they were phenomenal at it. You know, their ball retention got the it got that efficient. It got that efficient end that it nearly yeah. just was a death by a thousand cuts for teams. They were yeah. just keeping the ball. They were moving around the attacking points. They were getting width. They were getting depth long before Derry were doing this. You know, long yeah. before any team were doing it. And that obviously stemmed from the point of view that everyone was setting up the same way against them. Yeah. So I just feel that this current Dublin team maybe probably just aren't as efficient at doing yeah. that. You know, and there's always that mad decision from someone breaking forward. Like, for example, I, I remember a clear example, right? From back to Dublin in their prime, where Mick Fitz broke forward from cornerback and he got to the edge of the D. And I'll never forget this clip. 
I'd love to actually pull the clip out and watch it again. But he got to the edge of the D and he honestly could have flicked the ball over with his hand. He could have, he could have scored. He was in the edge of the D with his right foot, his left foot, or his fist. He could have scored easily. But he actually pivoted, you know, pivoted, turned, and waited for Brogan to come in the loop and just yeah. fed Brogan. And that was so, like, I was under Gavin. Everything was so systematic, so efficient. If Mick Fitz had taken that shot on, maybe possibly, worst case scenario, a player of his calibre would never have missed. But say, he, say, the, the risk was he missed. There was no risk in that Dublin team. You know, everything was so meticulously planned. Everything was so well thought out. This Dublin team, I just don't think, have the same discipline to follow that really, really rigid game plan that, that Gavin had brought in. And obviously, Desi has come in as a new manager. Uh, you know, one in all Ireland in his first year. Possibly, possibly that all Ireland win was maybe possibly still the, 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 the sort of the hangover from Jim, you know, floating about and the, mm-hmm. and obviously the sort of mental rehearsal through from the players had, you know, from from his days. But look, to be honest with you, and uh, uh, they're still a, they're still a force. They're, they're they're still a really really strong force. I told you last week I seen them playing down in Newry against Antrim in a in a in a sort of a challenge match. Their second string two days after the Leinster final. There's a few guys chomping at the bit to get into that team on Sunday, you know. So their their team selection will be very interesting on Sunday and what players they're bringing off the bench. The likes of Mannion, Costello, Scully playing in that game, O'Gara, like some really, really top class forwards, you know, that if the game's stretched in any capacity at all, can come yeah. can come in really, really hurt you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you want to go with nine ten points in the in the end? I'm going to go about nine point win for Dublin, yeah. Okay, okay. I'd say the bookies, you're not far off the bookies there, I'd say, um, with the handicap. But uh, we can add to the big one. So, I'm uh, Jerry. I, I'm kind of trying to decide all week what way I'm, I'm swaying here. I think I'm, I'm, I'm swaying towards our man, to be honest with you. But I don't know what you're, you're thinking. Yeah. What do, you, what do you reckon? Well, look, I, I, I think Armagh. Arma, obviously, I was sort of doing a piece this week actually from the Gaelic life on, on the final from a tactical yeah. perspective. I was looking at the final from a tactical perspective, and I was thinking of the different, the different types of, of attacks that that Derry liked to, to do. You know, the sort of cluster attack where they cluster yeah. body in the forty-five and try and create and isolate those one v one situations wide, and you know, very much like McCluskey's goal against uh, Monaghan in the semi-final yeah. where they isolate against McManus. I think Armagh might be a wee bit switched on to that now. And, you know, to defend a, a cluster kick out, a lot of teams go zonal. So I'm sort of thinking to myself, do you do what Louv did in RD that day, uh, who were probably actually the one team who gave them a real, real stiff test in the National League, you know, from a defensive point of view. Louv played very, very narrow. Uh, you know, they, they defended two thirds of the pitch very, very well. Yeah. They conceded some kick outs. You know, they didn't. They took away Derry's energy lines. They were very, very good that day, you know, and, and only a mistake laid on in the game. Now, albeit the game was was played in a, on, a, on a sort of a tighter pitch, heavier pitch in RD, which which maybe suited Lowe that day. But they did certainly give a template and, and, and maybe a bit of direction in, in how to stop Derry. I don't think playing them man-to-man is, is of any use whatsoever because they'll create those 1v1 situations and they're very good at that sort of planting and driving and changing direction of their attack and you know and, and really manipulate one v one situation and every every player there's there's a lot of players in the dairy team are very comfortable at taking their man on yeah in a one v one situation and then there's obviously a lot of coaching has gone on in training you know to create those situations and train and replicate those situations you know and, and it gives them a great advantage in that respect. So man to man may not be the way forward. Obviously RMA are gonna have to look at matchups and certain key players. Obviously, you know, Shane McGuigan is the standout one, you know, where, where, where they'll match up at him. Will they try and negate Glass's influence and, and match up at him? That's my biggest fear for Armagh. It's the middle of the field. Um, you know, obviously the players that they've had missing. Uh, Shane McPartland has come in and has has played really, really well. Scored a brilliant goal against Down. Uh, you know, big, strong, physical guy. Uh, they lost um, Creeley in the semi-final or in the Ulster semi-final. It looked like an injury just before half time. Stefan Campbell has played middle of the field there. I'm not sure he'll be the answer on Sunday. But certainly from a defensive point of view, I think Armagh will need to be playing a very deep line zonal defensive system early. And then when they do get the opportunities and uh, put the ball in, put the ball in and test Oren Lynch, test yeah. Derry's full back line. The young McAvoy, who was in the under-20 panel and uh, was taken off the under-20 panel himself and Lachlan Murray weren't allowed to play against Down, which which again in itself was was a bit of a disgrace, particularly the Lachlan Murray thing where he was brought on for 30 seconds. But uh, McAvoy full-back, young boy, 
you know, could you possibly, you know, really, really test his metal? Because I'm sure that Chrissy McCaig will probably pick up Rain O'Neill, but yeah. Rain O'Neill uh, will Rain O'Neill will probably float uh, and come out the field and drift inside. So it'll be it'll be a very interesting it'll be a very interesting final. I'm really looking forward to it, and uh, from a tactical point of view, to see what way both teams set up, how Armagh cope with with Derry's offensive organisation, as I would probably call it. Most teams are, are really organised defensively, but you know Derry seem to be really, really organised offensively this year, and have asked different questions of different teams. And unfortunately, those teams have failed to come up with the answers. So it will be interesting to see how Armagh approaches. Yeah, because I suppose we we kind of know from looking at Derry, like we know what they're going to do. I know obviously the offensive structures they've set up. Armagh would have seen this, so it's more. I'd be interested to see what Armagh do here, as you said. Other teams uh, couldn't. Um, couldn't come up with any answers there. So McGeady, Donahue, uh, Kieran McKeever is there, Nate, uh, the uh, former centre back. Uh, it'd be interesting, yeah, because, yeah, like we know Derry's blueprint here. We know what exactly what they're going to do. So, yeah, like Armagh, will they go ultra defensive? They, they, you know, I, I know there was a tweet, obviously, with Armagh and Kevin, you, I saw Yana. Uh, there's no difference between that man between this year and last year, I think. Um, what's yeah, like, yeah. Uh, well, I, I don't think like we had a chat about this today actually in school. Like, I actually don't think there is an awful lot of difference in the way they're setting up defensively. I just feel where Armagh have probably faltered this year is, you know, at times their their offensive game. But you've got to remember the personnel they've been missing too, Andy. You know, they've had to move different personnel. They've had a they've had a maybe. Rob Peter to feed Paul at different times, you know, with the, with the problems they've had in the middle of the field, the injuries they've had up front, um, you know, key injuries to Andrew Mernon, Rian O'Neill, yeah. you know, those those type of injuries. Well, they were they were in a, in a Division One where they were extremely unlucky to be relegated. You know, very very yeah. unlucky. They lost to Kerry by a point. They lost to to go away by a point. You know, in the last the last like very very late in both those games. Those are two teams that we're talking about now. As, as real proper All Ireland contenders, and yet Armagh are going toe to toe with them. So it'll be very, very interesting to see, as you say, how they approach it against Down in the semi final. And uh, they did the first three balls, they went route one. It was very, very clear they were going to put Down's full back line under pressure. Okay. Uh, Down's heel during the National League has been high balls into the goalkeeper. A um, couple of major mistakes, you know, goalkeeping errors probably cost Down promotion this year. And Armagh obviously identified that. And they put serious duress on, on on the keeper that day and got joy out of it, you know, and, and probably got two to three goals off that. Now, Rain O'Neill's goal was obviously a beautiful goal. The game was stretched at that stage. But, you know, they will probably look at Oren Lynch, who made him a couple of major errors against Monaghan as well. And this is the thing about a goalkeeper. If Oren Lynch is out the field so much during the game, and uh, there can be a little bit of physical fatigue there as well, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so what do you, what do you, what do you, say, what do you say in here? Who are you going for? I'm saying I'm going to go Derry by Derry by two. Derry by two. Yeah, uh, I'm going to say I'm going to say, yeah I'm going to say I'm by two. It'd be interesting. That, like we're just obviously we're not going to get into too much detail here. But as as you know, a man being part of management teams, obviously the whole uh, social media kind of buzz with Rory and uh, his private life. Like uh, in terms of how do you think that the Derry camp are going to handle that, do you think? Obviously, players, though, do they stay, do all them stay off social media? They probably do at this stage, do they? What do you think? I think, uh, look, to be on social media, now at that level, is obviously, you know, it's, it's sure, dangerous, you know. <laughs> it is, it is. You can feed um, into your for a game, you know. <laughs> uh, it'll be, yeah, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. Watch uh, the whole tobacco too with the Diego uh, TV. What's your opinion on that? Obviously, what's, your, what's your views on it? Uh, my views on it is um, I'm thinking they they tried to pull a fast one, to be honest with you. Uh, <laughs> I'm thinking uh, we're paying a, a, what you, a license fee and, you know, there's obviously a vested interest, you know, and they obviously RTO own 50% of Diego and they, yeah, they tried to pull a fast one. That was, that's, that's my opinion on it. Um, I don't know what you think, but uh, that will it's a five year contract, so they'll probably have a look at it at the end of the year because pressure will come on. Um, but like the about Sky Sports was was obviously uh, you know, they're mounted about Sky Sports, but this you know, you have to download an app for GA Go, it's yeah. fucking it's a pain in the hole. People like I'm only thinking and, of the like 
I'm thinking of the likes of my father. Yeah. He's very old school, you know, and watching the games in the house and the whole the go thing, you know, maybe the Wi Fi's not great, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, you know, and it's it's very unfair on people, you know, and at least with Sky, you know, you you knew what you were getting, you were getting a good product. Yeah. You were getting really top class analysis as well, you know, and you're not really getting that on GA Go, you know. But it was nice revelations during the week when we found out that RTE have, you know, GA Go fifty percent share, like, you know, and in, in RTE have fifty percent share and it so they're the major question marks asked there now, you know, over that and, and where that's going. And I know some of the government min- ministers have got involved in that debate. So that'll be interesting well, to see how they, that they showed. They showed, and it sounds going to cost you, but the real thing I'd say what pissed people off is they were showing the court, uh, uh, fucking Prince Charles, the coronation, and uh, the Munster, the Munster yeah. Hurling Cork, one of the best, <laughs> best games of the year. The irony well, is, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you here now, I'm not going to give off with. Uh, King Charles because I get a day off on Monday for the coronation. Like, so, <laughs> we get a bank holiday up here by in the in the in the, in the, in the, in the E6 by we get a bank holiday. Uh, oh, it, was a, it, was, it was a disgrace, like it was a disgrace, like an <laughs> unbelievable monster hurling game on, and 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 that being shown, like oh. But did you see? It, it, did maybe, you see the interview? Did you see the interview with uh, Katrina and the betters and RT News? I did, I did, yeah. I thought she was very, very good. I thought her question was excellent. Uh, put McBennett on the back foot, but look, I've yeah. spoke to McBennett. <laughs> I've spoke to McBennett in the past and over a couple of things that I felt was was very, very unfair, particularly uh, gauged in, in my own direction. Uh, you know, from a certain number of pundits within RTE at the time, and you know, got the same sort of waffle from him, the same sort of party lines about credibility and the nonsense and you know, uh, waffle that he spouted out. Like, so I don't really have much time for him. I don't really, I don't really have much, I don't really have much respect for his opinion either, to be honest with you. I think he's a, I think he's a waffler, you know, and a, and a, and a, and a <coughs> commoner, to be honest with you, I wouldn't have, I, I, look, here, listen, if, if they maybe stopped, you know, paying some of the highly, highly well-paid pundits that to, to talk absolute nonsense, you know what I'd be, you know, honestly, you know what they'd be safer doing? And this is the truth. They'd be safer losing the pundits and just showing the game. Just show more games, less talking, but just show more games because there's very, very few of them that are actually fit to analyze the games and talk about the games, you know. And to be fair to Brawley, like <laughs> I wasn't Brawley's greatest fan at times, like, but he did bring a bit of crap, he did bring a bit of joy to it. You look at the product that Sky Sports have on a Monday night football with Carragher and Neville, and you, you see even on a, on a Sunday with Keane, he'll speak what he th- he'll, say, he'll say what he feels. Like Lee Keegan apologized for giving a man of the match. He actually apologized for giving a man of the match to to you know on social media apologies to give a if you're there if you're there to make an opinion why are you going back and apologizing then like you know just give your opinion and stand by it you know if that's what you see that's what you see you know but i i just think to be safer off cut the pundit break cut the nonsense cut the talking see on a sunday night i would say people would much prefer to see 15 games shown over the next because over the next few weeks we're going to have talson cup harlan sam mcguire show the games and lose the talking People will be much happier, much happier, you know. Like, Jesus, some of the stuff you listen to on Sunday nights in Barson. Uh, yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't watch it, to be honest with you. I can't, I can't watch it anymore or see it, to be honest with you. Drives me mad. Huh? Drives me mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, the, the counter-argument they're saying, obviously, uh, this money is going to grassroots. I don't know. People are throwing that out. I don't know if, the, if that's the case. Uh, they're not about the upkeep of, of the facilities around the country, that uh, money has to come from somewhere. Uh, again, like, I've, I I have to look into it more where, you know, exactly uh, that money goes yeah. in terms of, I, I can't see it. Yeah, I don't know. I'll have to. Yeah, look, it'll be interesting uh, again next year. We see what what comes uh, comes about. But uh, I, yeah, it was just I. I think that Bennett was nearly surprised at the line of question that he got from from Katrina. Obviously, she works from RTE. Yeah. She's obviously been she's going herself for two weeks time to BBC. So that obviously had matters. But it was nice to yeah. see him, uh, you know, put under pressure, and uh, he cer- he certainly didn't like it. So look, we just we just round up with the the Talton Cups. Uh, um, the round one is obviously on the on the thirteenth tomorrow or Saturday the thirteenth of May. Um, I'm just going to run through the game, see if we get get your brief opinion in terms of who's going to win it. Kevin Leash, Gavin yeah, at a counter. Like all the games this weekend are very unbalanced and yeah. very very unbalanced. You know, uh, down Waterford's fucking twelve thirteen points. I think you said fifteen points, was it? Uh, listen. 
Yeah. You could save themselves six or seven grand there and, you know, just not bother traveling down the road. That's the truth. Are you Are you even going to go to that game? Probably not. No. 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 Yeah, let's yeah, I'm let's actually, say I'm actually going out for a meal Saturday night, so I'll not be honest. Yeah. Uh, Limerick Clan first. That could be a tight game. Tight game. Uh, both teams have misfortunes this year. Obviously, Longford relegated and Limerick relegated. Yeah. Uh, maybe Limerick's, Limerick's experience of playing maybe in Division 2 this year might just stand by them in that one, you know. Yeah. Uh, Mead tip. I tell you what, Stevie. We're going on about Mead now <laughs> in the last few, a few weeks. But this is, I'm not joking here now, but this is um, a big, Tantan Cup now for Cullum Work is a big competition in terms of if this, like, there will be question marks. I, and we said it before, you, obviously you said about his legendary status as a player, like, but if there is an, imp- an improvement, if they have a disastrous Tantan Cup, we say, you know, yeah. he mightn't get a second second year here. Am I being... Uh, I'll be honest with you. If they don't beat Tip... They will be tipped. Nah, fuck it. They will be tipped now. Jesus, they'll be tipped. But my God, like if they don't look, they'll get out of the group because they'll beat, they'll beat tipped, they'll beat Waterford, and themselves and down will be a coin toss, like you know. Mm. Uh, so they'll be out of the group. And but I think if they come up against a team like Cavan or Fermanagh, yeah. who have a bit of organisation, there's probably only four teams can really win it. Uh, you're probably looking at Cavan, Fermanagh, down, and if everything, if everything went well, possibly me. You know, but but he ha- like they have to they have to come into these games and they have to come into these games with some form of a game plan, some resemblance of a game plan. You know, not just come in and say we're trying to trying to kick the ball or we're trying to you know uh, you know trying to uh, impose our kicking game on this. Like, there has to be an element of of defensive organisation when they're when they're out of possession. There has to be some sort of attacking plan when they win the ball. You know, they just cannot play off the cuff football. It just doesn't work. It doesn't work no. anymore. No, no. You know? Yeah. So, I'm looking at the Talshin, and obviously, if you're asking me here now, if Mayo were coming to Nuri on Saturday night, would I go to it? I probably would. I probably would. I'd be, I'd be excited about that. You know, I'd want to go and watch that. Do I want to go and obviously support the county? It's great. Like obviously, yes, get behind it, but <coughs> to pay the money to pay for a full family to go your whole evening gone to watch a, a facile victory. And I'm looking at the Talchin Cup and I'm thinking to myself, like, there's nothing really to get excited about. There's nothing. You know, Not and the last if, four, the last four CD again, yeah, as you said. If it was a knockout, but if it was a knockout competition, if it was a knockout competition and for toxic Cavan were away to Limerick this weekend. You'd be sort of yeah. thinking, it's a tricky one. That's a tricky yeah. one. You know, if, if Down had to go to Ockram to play Wicklow in Ockram, packed house Saturday, you'd be thinking, knockout, a wee bit of pressure. You never know. Oshin yeah. has been well organised, you know, a couple of goals. You never, you know, yeah. all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden you have a Carlo who, you know, on their day could, could produce a performance. Say they get Leitrim in the first round, beat Leitrim. Say they draw the winners of New York and New York and, uh, just for talking about Waterford, all of a sudden, Carlo's sitting in a, in a quarter final or semi final, and it's giving them a wee bit of hope. And a wee, but like the way it, the way this group thing is just, they're just, they're just playing more games, more games, giving teams more drubbins, more beatings, just so that you're going to have the same four teams in the semi final. Like, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, not yeah. Sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me at all. No, and, but uh, even, the seed, even the seeding of it, like you know, okay, like Sligo got to a conic final, right? But they were Division 4. You know, there's teams in Division 2 that are obviously in the Talchin Cup. You know, Cavan, for example. You know, Cavan, for me, would give most teams in that Sam Maguire group, probably the, probably the bottom eight teams, you know, a really, really competitive game. Yeah. You know, if possibly, I'm prob- I probably could win against half of those teams in Sam Maguire, right? They'd beat the likes of Westmeath. They could possibly beat the likes of uh, Clare. They could beat... Cavan could beat the likes of Donegal, you know, at the yeah. present moment. You know, and you're probably looking at maybe seven or eight teams that, that they would probably struggle against, but they would still be competitive. You know, it, it just doesn't make it, it doesn't make sense for me. It, it doesn't it doesn't add up. And you're judging Cavan, like you're saying to Cavan, like you have to make an Ulster final. So you have to beat, you know, Armagh, and then you have to beat, obviously, Down or Donegal. It just, whereas other counties can just... Look at Sligo. You know, and, and that's not that's nothing to do with the counties that were involved. It's, it's not their fault, you know. It's just that's just the way that's just the it's just the system. The system yeah. is wrong, the system's broken. It's broken. It really is broken. 
you know. Uh, for for I uh, just get through these. Fermanagh Wexford Fermanagh by by Matthew. What does that give? Uh, Fermanagh. Fermanagh beat them comfortably. Yeah, and from Neitrum, up up in uh, up in Belfast. Andrum, I, I I actually think those couple of challenge games that Andrum played against Donegal and, and Dublin will stand them in good stead coming into the, the Talchin. Andrum will beat Leitrim. Okay. Offaly, London. Offaly, at home. Offaly. Offaly, yeah. And the last one, this would be Wicklow, Carlo. Wicklow's at home. Wicklow should beat them. Wicklow, Carlo have historically got a decent record against Wicklow, but in Akram, they, and the fact that Wicklow were promoted and, and you know, Carlo in person. So, yeah. 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 Right. On that note, Stevie, we'll, uh, we'll leave it there. Uh, always a pleasure. Uh, and a good man. Come on. We'll chat to you next week. Cheers, mate. Good luck, good luck, good luck.